Okay, now that we have taken a look and understand the symbolism behind the purple bubble, like the witch traveled in in the Wizard of Oz, and the, have the understanding, or at least you should have caught on to it, that what the purple bubbles are, are Taurus fields. Okay. Now, we'll get more into detail as to, well, what is that exactly? It is a... It is what nature is in this world. The Taurus field exists and manifests in pretty much just everything from seashells to hurricanes. So, but what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at one of the scenes that we looked at in the previous part, in part one. We're going to look at this specific video because it's going to allow us to now see what else they're trying to show us. Uh, for those that have the eyes to see, and will take us to the next part, this part, part two. So let's take a look at this. Okay, you should have seen, well, you did see, but until the eyes can see, you can't see. Until the mind can see, you can't see. Let's show you what you are looking at, okay? Okay, so the scene opens up. You've got uh, a lot of purple imagery you know, but let's move forward a little bit here. Let me put the that on for the moment. The Paul, uh, the mute the sound. And let's move forward, and then we're going to do it slowly here in a moment. Okay, we're going to a storefront. The Terminator or the deity is coming in through the storefront, right? Okay. There's a message right here. This is symbolism. What is right here in between us and that there in the storefront? It's glass. It's symbolizing the veil between what you can see and what you can't see that exists in our world. W-H-I-R-L-E-D. Which you're going to find out a lot more about. It's coming. So we have the glass, which is the veil. Now, what can't we see? Well, in this situation, they're showing us what we can't see in this image. In a couple of ways. You might notice it says right here on the window. It says, I like this look. It says the words, I and it says look okay I like this look it's referring to the eye and telling you to look what do you see here okay you see mannequins in the image of three women at least three I think here and you see obviously a rose behind the mannequins right you see a rose. Now, what is the rose? Let's start on the easy level. What is the rose on a rose plant? It is the reproductive organ. The flower is the reproductive organ that produces the seeds inside of the torus field that it 
that exists within and on the flower. Those of you who have been to Central America, you will know that the flowers in Central America, they glow. They put off more light than the same flowers you will see out of the tropics. Okay. And it's because it's what you can see and what you can't see based on the light conditions, which we're going to be getting a lot into in this video. But let's keep going here. The rose, the symbolism of the reproductive organ. It also is the symbolism for a Taurus. It is the symbolism for a Taurus field, the flower of life, sacred geometry. That's why they're showing us the flower. Now, let's keep moving on, and we're going to get a lot more in depth than that. Let's keep moving forward here and see what happens. Uh, we get a flash of light, right? Oops, I went too far too fast. Let's try that again. And we will get a flash of light. You can see there's a little bit of a breeze. And what do we get? We get a purple spark. Purple spark. Remember how I told you in the last video, the orbs that are seen in the skies and the ones that I see on the beach. <coughs> Excuse me. And the ones that can be seen most easily at the waterfront and on the mountaintops at sunset. That is the biblical times when it is when they are seen most easy and like in the book of Daniel and the story of Noah, excuse me, the story of Moses on the mountaintop and so on. They appear on the mountaintops and they appear by the water most often most easiest to be seen. And what do you see first? If you go sit at the ocean's edge and you look out across the water or even on a lake, I believe, and you look for sparks in the air, you look for quick sparks, just like, just like you're seeing here. Okay. When you see the sparks and you have to probably use your peripheral vision to be able to see them. When you see the sparks, you know, they're there and that they can, if they choose, for whatever reason, to show themselves they can. And that is what is being shown here, the spark. Just like I've seen with my own eyes many, many times. So let's, let's, uh, go further here. Okay. Now look what showed up. Another flower to the right. See it? Another flower. Another, and that one even looks like a lotus, which would be even more specific. And then you can see there's several other flowers, and they're purple. Yep. So we keep moving forward. We get the sparks. I'm going frame by frame. Moving it forward. Moving it forward. Sorry to take a minute, but it's important when you want to understand something, not just in the movies, but in life, you have to stop and look frame by frame, meaning very closely analyzing. Their motto is to observe nature and then copy it. Let that sink in. Observe nature and then copy it. That is where the powers that they gain come from. That is why they have built CERN the way they have. That is why they have done. Uh, that's why they're building Bitcoin in the image of a Taurus. Just type in Taurus cryptocurrency and you'll see it's there. 
And if you know anything about Bitcoin and the charts, you'll know that they use the Fibonacci code, golden ratios in the charts, which is based on the Taurus. It's based on sacred geometry. Okay, let's try to keep moving forward. There's another spark. So clearly showing the same thing that I've demonstrated in videos and seen in my real life. And then after those sparks appear, and as I've stated previously, I was standing on the beach one night, looking out over the ocean, specifically waiting for them to appear. And I could see the sparks out over the water. They don't always appear every time they spark. And then one did appear just a little ways out over the water. And when it did appear, it only stayed for two or three seconds. And then as it started fading, I could see as they start to fade, you can see the purple in them better. And then that one that night, it sent a bolt of electricity out of it and into the water. A b lightning bolt struck the ocean right below it. However, it was only about 30 feet, maybe 20 feet below or above the water, as you would say, as it sat. And as you can see here, they're using the symbolism of the lightning, just like they did in each one of these, right? So I'm continuing forward here, describing things in my thoughts as we do this here. There's the other spark again. And of course, we're fixing to get the bubble, the image of the Taurus, in just a moment, which is also an image of the rose. It's also an image of the pine cone, also an image of many, many seashells, and is also the image of our eye of the female reproductive system and the list goes on and it's also the image of angels and deities that our creator created and God doesn't make mistakes does he let's see if we can get on through this a little quick and here this mannequin melts strangely and I'm sure there is a reason why they chose to show this so carefully as well but I'm not positive on why they showed the mannequin melting but we're looking do you see her hair she went from having long black hair to having what looks like a towel on her head. That is very strange. It'll probably come to me later. Now she's got maybe no hair. And of course, this is taking a moment, but it's important to understand. You have to slow down. Apparently, that's why I talk so slow. You have to slow down in order to observe nature. Or to observe when they're showing you something. Because they know if you're going to have eyes, and if you're meant to see it and understand it, that you are no, you are going to know you need to slow down like with videos and things like that go frame by frame because every frame is intentional and they're showing you something pretty crazy looking okay come on I'm pushing the button as fast as I can but I don't want to hit five seconds forward because we'll miss too much 
still watching this image. I'm not quite positive on what the deal is there, but okay, so here we are, and the bubble is starting to form as we can kind of see. And we can see the flowers. The lotus flower on the right, like is in the video, I pet goat. Here comes our bubble and our our deity. In this case, they're showing it as a robot, an AI-controlled robot. But that is just, you might say, the way they chose to show a deity with superpowers in this. About have to slow down and look at, like, analyze about every frame because I see all kinds of crazy stuff going on there. Somebody standing on a mountain looks like up here. Kind of interesting. Let's keep going. And then something going on right here, as you can see, some letters and such. Looks like F and then some other F's maybe. Again, reminding me of I Pet Goat in the classroom. They had the F's, minus F and plus F or F and minus F on the wall. Could be related. Matter of fact, I'm positive it is. Maybe that's a reflection of across the street. Not quite sure. But it isn't a true reflection because this isn't a true image. This is all, this is all created CGI. And here comes the bubble as we're finally making it here. Okay. Let's back up one frame. Mm. Okay. This is definitely what you call slowing down and looking at things frame by frame. Although when I'm doing it, I go much slower. I spend a lot of time on each frame, literally. Okay, here comes together some things. Some of the imagery. See the cube pattern coming in down here? The cubes. The cube and the torus are synonymous. You notice how on, they claimed it on the top of uh, Saturn and Jupiter and planets, the failed stars, uh, that there are the cubes on top that rotate. It's the same as this. That's why we know that the stars are, in fact, Taurus fields that hold deities. And the Bible says that they were angels that failed to hold their way, so God froze them in their places. Okay. Here comes more of the bubble together. We're starting to see the grid pattern. And then the bubble comes together. I'm sure this is the slowest you've ever watched anything. And I'm probably the slowest talking person that you've ever listened to. At least I have something interesting to talk about. Okay, now we see what looks like the shiny looking bubble with fire in the middle. And then a lightning bolt strikes. A ring of fire. Makes me think of a number of things, but one, it makes me think of the word uh, Shin Kolabwe. Do you remember that one? I know some of you do. The place in the fire where God lives. That was my translation of the word Shin Kolabwe, which is the area which most of the uranium uh, ever mined in the world was found at. At least originally. Shinkolabwe, the place in the fire where God lives. 
And I know some of you are thinking, in the fire, that's like hell. The Bible says that, that God is, is, the closer you are to God, the closer you are to the fire. And to be away from the fire is to leave, leave God, basically. So we got all these sparks, picks of dust kind of stuff. And you got this big ball that looks like a, a big tourist field. Just very, very similar to what I've seen many, many times. Then here we have the fire circle spreading out in somewhat of an octagon shape, eight sided, but it's not perfect. It's pretty close. But it's spreading out. Come on, I'm pushing the button. I just don't want to miss anything to show you here as best I can. And of course, you can see what looks like pillars on both sides as well. Y'all guys are going to be amazed in this series of videos how far we're going to go with things and the things that I've come to understand and that I'm going to show you but I have to use I can't just tell you I have to show you all of the various types of cooperating evidence you might call it okay so now it's turning to look like water yeah, it kind of looks like water. Kind of reminds me of Stargate. And yes, one of you guys mentioned that in the comments. And I'm, I have gone back and looking at Stargate. Oops. Too far. And I've seen some of it before, but yeah, you're definitely right. They talk about the eye. They talk about the tourist. They, that's half of what the show is about is the gateway and if you don't know what I'm talking about you will soon and if you're not subscribed to this channel nail that button and, and click that bell again kind of looking like water which is a big player in all of this because we whether you realize it or not you live underwater yeah that's right is thinner and our lungs are designed to breathe it and our bodies are designed to exist in it. But there's water below, like in the ocean and further. And there's, matter of fact, there are videos on YouTube you can go and watch where they went down to the bottom of one of the deepest places in the ocean and they found more water that's thicker that the submarine would not submerge into actual supposed real story I wasn't there but they found really really thick water and then there's the ocean the water that we're familiar with and then matter of fact the ocean is thicker water than uh, what we call like rainwater or river water regular water the ocean is thicker and more buoyant than regular water you can float easier in the ocean whether you know it or not than you can in real water and the air that's around us that you can feel the breeze as they call it it is water too and there are waters above us that are a different type of water as well there are videos on YouTube where they've shot rockets straight up and they go up and they're spinning and spinning in just enormous spin speeds until they hit the water different kind of water than we have down here and different kind of water that's in the ocean but it's water what does Genesis say the face of the waters I wonder why I use the word face. I reckon it has anything to do with the image of God. I reckon it has anything to do 
with our face. It has anything to do with the eyes and the nose and the mouth and everything that especially our head is, but including our entire body. So you can kind of see how it went here. Everything symbolism wise, just like I've talked to you about. I'll keep going just a little bit more, but I want to go ahead and move on to the flower. Yeah, because I've got, uh, we'll see how much I can get to in this video, but I've got some incredible uh, things I want to show you and tell you. Hopefully I haven't bored you to death so far, but you have to see and understand these things. You have to observe nature and then you can choose to copy it for good or you can choose to copy it for evil just like in the garden of evil garden of evil the garden of eve eve evil hmm. anyways with the apple in the the tree of knowledge of good and evil and what is the tree of knowledge the things that it promised well, you're learning about it. Okay, I think we're just going to go ahead and let me pull up the other application here. So I'm sure you remember me showing you Bush and him talking about an angel that rides in a whirlwind and directs the storm. It's the same storm that... Trump talked about. He said this might be the calm before the storm. It's the same storm. But he talked about an angel riding in a whirlwind. What is a whirlwind? Well, a whirlwind is a Taurus. It is a hurricane. It is a tornado just like Dorothy left one land and went to another reality via a tor a tornado and which so what is Bush talking about an angel that dances in the whirlwind just like they have at CERN so what do you think they're up to at CERN wonder if there's any signs well here's one and it actually has a sign below it and it says in a couple of different languages it says, O oh, Omnipresent, the embodiment of all virtues, the creator of the cosmic universe, the king of dancers, who dances the Ananda, uh, I might say this wrong, but because I can't quite recall what the third letter is there, but we'll just say it's the Tadova, the Ananda to Dova in the twilight. When is the twilight? When the sun sets. Just like when we see them. You see, they've been seeing the deities dancing in a whirlwind in a bubble ever since Egyptian times. Ever since the creation times. They've been here most people, especially the History Channel on YouTube, want you to believe they're aliens. They're not. They're deities. They were created by the same creator who created us. Okay? They just exist typically on the other side of the veil, but have the ability to show themselves to us. No matter whether the one you see be good or be bad, be risen or fallen, right? Now, I just went and talked trash about the History Channel. What the History Channel does is they show you some truth and then they twist it into a lie or into an alien story, which is absolutely a lie. 
everything that is and was that's been on this earth or whatever will come to this earth is already here or was here other than maybe God himself, okay? Although he's here too. But I want to show you this video clip, so let's take a look at that. It's just a couple of minutes. Uh, you'll see why I'm wanting to show it to you in a second. Because they're, they're telling us some truth right here, but I'm not going to let them get into the lies and twisting too much. But this will show you some of the what I'm seeing. Giza, Egypt. In 1977, and then again in 1987, electronics engineer and inventor Joe Parr conducted experiments on the top of the Great Pyramid. Using equipment of his own design, Parr measured the pyramid's electrical, magnetic, and radioactive properties. Joe Parr, who was my very close friend and research colleague, discovered what I believe is the most incredible discovery about the Great Pyramid and pyramids in general. Joe believed that the pyramids had an energy field around them. All pyramids had it. The problem is the pyramid energy field was usually not strong enough. So he developed in his laboratory a method for generating this pyramid energy, so then he could actually do scientific studies on it. Over the last few decades, people have been experimenting with pyramids. What has come to the forefront of this is the fact that pyramids are an enigma. They really have powers which are very hard to explain. And so people like Joe Parr have been looking into this. When somebody goes to the top of the Great Pyramid, and experiences this weird electromagnetic vibration. This is not just a coincidence, but this has to do with the fact that the Great Pyramid is causing this. Joe Parr found out that if he put a model pyramid and spun it in a centrifuge through an alternating magnetic current, an energy field, or he calls it an orb or bubble, would form around the model pyramid. Joe found that this bubble or energy orb would block all known types of electromagnetic radiation, even gamma rays. Now, this was interesting. We don't know of any types of energy forces that could do this. This is the most incredible thing about Joe Parr's discovery. In later laboratory experiments, Parr claimed to have discovered yet another strange physical phenomenon. The model pyramid became weightless in the energy field and began to move in a specific direction. And he calculated the direction of this energy field where the pyramid would shoot out from. And guess what? It aligns exactly where we would see the constellation Orion. All right, that's probably far enough with that because then they go into the aliens. Ah, uh, okay, so let's see what to say about that. Talking about the pyramids, okay, we're going to get much more into pe every piece of this in general, but we're talking about the pyramids, energy fields, and then a, and then a bubble. Imagine that. It looks just like the bubbles we've been looking at. And they did the graphics. I didn't. And then it rises up. You know, what they did was they created a, uh, you might say, an art, he learned how to create an artificial uh, uh, torus field, you know, on a small level. And uh, was able to create the bubble, which is pretty wild. And uh, so, but I wanted to, to share that part with you because it's about the bubble. This is a painting, a famous painting of the rapture. And here is Christ coming back in the light bubble, you see? Not only in a light bubble, but in the shape of an eye, you see? 
See how the clouds are shaped? All this is intentional. You don't paint a painting without deciding to make this accidentally look like an eye. Okay? And that's going to come much more into play. The eye, the eye rust, the eye rust world. Yes, indeed. Here's another example of that, right? Yep. A bubble around his head, and he sits in a bubble. Another similar image. This one was very interesting. I almost didn't include it until I noticed the plane crashing into the building over here on the left-hand side has a plane crashing into a high-rise. I wonder where we've seen that before. I'm not quite sure. Somewheres. Okay. Okay. okay I want to show you this image here. This is an image that comes out of a bigger image from uh, from the temple. Okay, like, uh, you know, like Solomon's temple. Okay, but... And it's exactly described, okay, in the Bible about this right here. And what you're looking at, because the building itself was the image of man, and man is was made in the image of God. And it all is still very much related. But this is an image, it's a, see this, what you might call a pot sitting here? Okay, it is in the image of a Taurus. Okay, it's in the image of the eye of a Taurus. Okay, see the open top, the eye of a Taurus field being held up by three oxen on each side. Okay, and they're standing in the middle of what looks like a lotus flower. See the concentric circles going around and around and around. Okay, and it all sits inside of a thing with a turned up edge. You see, it's not perfectly flat, and it has a turned up edge. What this, I believe, is, is an image of our world. Let's see, let me read what I wrote here. Here again, we see a symbol of a tourist sitting on the back of 12 oxes, bulls, Bulls, as in Toro, Taurus, with three facing east, north, east, south, north, south, east, and west. And the Taurus contains what? Water. And what is water? The symbol for it is life. Okay. Let's see, I said, notice the image with the repeating circles overlapping like the flower, the sacred geometry, and sitting in a pan with a turned up edge. Yep. And this up here, if it weren't for the fact of, that it was a pail holding water, or there's probably a more proper word for it, or Taurus holding water, uh, you would almost call it a footstool. And then 1 Kings 7.25 says, It stood upon 12 oxen, 12 oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was was set up, uh, and the sea was set above upon them, and all that hindered their parts were within. It said the sea was set in here. The water. This is the world. You see. This is the Bible telling us this is the world. Held up by toros, three toros to the east, three toros to the west, just like what you see down here, these flower petals, the sacred geometry symbol symbolism. You see, you got three petals to the west, three toros to the west, three toros, three petals to the east, north and south. Supporting a larger Taurus with a body of water in it. 
this image here from the Toros up is basically the same image as the image down here below their feet. As above, so below, as the occultist said. Right? You got a pan with an upturned edge on the outer edge with water around it. And you got up here the pan that it says it has the sea in it, which is an indication the whole world in it has what? An upturned edge on the edge. You see? We live in a world, W-H-I-R-L-E-D, not W-O-R-L-D. Now you know a big secret that's been hidden, hidden from everyone all in the entire world for a long time. People want to know if it's round. They want to know if it's flat. This is it right here. It's all Taurus fields and sacred geometry with what's below is also same as what's above. They don't always lie. Also, I wanted to say this is why you notice that 3 and 3 and 3 and 3 is 12. That's why there's 12 hours on a clock. That's why there's so many things in this world that is built in this image. Where people as smart as I and you in the past have learned what the occult know. It's just a matter of whether you're going to use it for good or for world domination, which is what they're trying to do. They believe they are God, and because they have some of the knowledge of God, that it gives them the right to world dominate, the new world order, you know, that kind of thing. So now you know. And here is the iris, very similar to the word Taurus. And did you know your brow right above your eye is called superior Taurus? Yep. It's literally called a superior Taurus. And your eye is called an iris. Yep. And why do I bring that up further? Well, let's, let's show you. And some of you have seen this, but we continue to put these pieces together, don't we? Yeah. Oh, look at it. Look at it. <laughs>
Okay, here we go, the storm, the two Tauruses, you have to have two Tauruses in order for a hurricane to form, one below, one above, and many small ones that exist within, just like what you've seen with the, the Taurus on the back of the Tauros, the bulls. Here it goes forming nicely, coming together, you'll get, a, we'll get an eye here in a moment. The two Tauruses have to stack exactly just like what you've seen in the image I showed you in the beginning. Here's our eye coming together. And what you have here is, an eye, is a Taurus. Two Tauruses spinning with smaller Tauruses within and with a, uh, a cube just like they claim is on the top of Saturn spinning in the middle. There is actually a cube that spins in the middle of the storm. Pretty wild, isn't it? Observe nature and then copy it. You see, our current economic system is based on the flow of water in the rivers because all water returns to the bank, doesn't it? That's why you have currency in money and you have currency in the water and you have the bank of the river, you have the bank of the whatever. All their designs, they design the economic system based on the flow of water in our river systems so that they knew that the money would always come back to them and that they would maintain power. Observe nature and copy it. You have to choose whether you use it for good or for evil. And you see they're well aware of the cube spinning on its axis 
just like these three sitting here. Cube spinning on its axis in the center of a torus. Yep. The cube spinning in there. Which exists within the sacred geometry, the design of the torus, which we will be showing much more as we continue along in this series of the iris world. Nature loves this shape. Yeah. Nature definitely loves this shape. And if you can look at that right there, you can you should be able to see in your mind how it can be how you could see a, a three dimensional cube pretty easy. Okay. This is the same reason why they do this. And many of you know why they wear it on their forehead, although they should bring it down slightly, probably, because you have the Crystal Galley right between your eyes. You have the Holy of Holies right between your eyes, just like in the temples with the Holy of Holies in the head of the body of the building at the top. And so is your head. The Christa Galley, for those of you that haven't heard me talk about this before, is the Galley is where the Christ, the Christ, hangs out. It's where God exists within you. The eternal fire, the the flame exists between in your forehead. Now, I said you needed two Tauruses at, at a minimum to get a hurricane going. You need one on top, one on the bottom, like this. You need to low at the top and low at the surface. And so you have a Taurus on the top and a Taurus on the bottom. That is the image that a hurricane functions on. And it's also the same image that I showed you earlier, isn't it? Let me grab it real quick here so you can see it again. Remind you what, you're, what I'm talking about. The Taurus on the top, the Taurus on the bottom. And the smaller Taurus is in between and supporting the storm, you might say. How many of you can tell me in the story of Christ at what hour of the day was it said that Christ was crucified? It said the sixth hour of the day. That is noon. No, not 6 a.m. Noon. That is the sixth hour of the day. And it said what happened. Well, it said there was an earthquake and the sun would not give its light for three hours. Okay. A, an eclipse from beginning like this or when it first starts. Let me see if I think I have this queued up. Of course, it's going to do a commercial. But a, a, an eclipse, the longest ones last for three hours. So when Christ was said to have passed, I didn't like the way they showed that to you. Let's, uh, let's look at this again. Oh, that wasn't a commercial. I see what it was. Okay. Let's keep watching that again. So there's your eye. Your eye. The iris. Look. It showed your eye turn into an eclipse. Didn't they? Yep. They did. Isn't that amazing?
you know, they like to share their Here's another example of a torus would be a whirlpool or similar to how the water goes down your toilet depending on which side of the polarity of the the uh, energy field which is the torus you are on the water turns one way or it turns the other simple as that doesn't have anything about being on top or in the bottom of the world has to do with polarity flow but we have Whirlpools, like a tornado, but underwater. See, these things copy each other over and over and over and over. Everything is in the image of God. Are you starting to understand that a little bit now? They're showing you here the torus fields turning and the smaller forces Smaller torus fields spinning the other torus fields. Now I have another one very interesting to show you. Ooh. Remember this? They're going to show you a torus. They're going to show you an eye. They're showing you the world, the image of the world. And where do you think the iris of the world is at? Take a guess. Might have something to do with the fact that it said heaven. talks about green light, green flowing light, like beautiful emeralds and things, and jasper. You see that? What you got? You got a torus on top and another torus, and you got an iris opening, the gateway. Now you know. probably figured this one was coming next right after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of thunder talking with me which said come hither come up hither and I will show thee the things which much be must be hereafter and immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in the heavens, and one set on the throne, and he set, and he that set was to look upon like jasper and star, sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like unto emerald. One of you guys actually sent me that note, and yes, that is 100% correct. The streams of light that we're seeing that they call the Ouroboros, the Aura Taurus, the Ouroboros, the Taurus. You see, they tell you the truth and then lie about it. What do you think's to the north now? Another example of how a torus can form. Torus, Shinkolabwe, the place in the fire where God lives. A whirlwind. Yep. See, nature follows. The rules of nature and what is nature well for one thing for sure it is 
the Taurus, and it is everything in nature is, uh, I guess you'd say, fractional or fractal. How you like that? Pretty cool, huh? And I'll show you this real quick. Talking about, I told you that Bitcoin is a toroidal economic system. And just this is just a few things showing you that, that I know what I'm talking about. Here's Taurus has to do with cryptocurrency. And look at the shape they chose to show you. The circles around a circle. The Toros around the two circles. The circle on top, the circle below, surrounded by the Toros. And how many are there? Was that 12? Looks like pretty close, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Wow, isn't that just amazing? <laughs> and I'm not joking, really. And then here you're talking about Ethereum. You know, you got Bitcoin, Ethereum, all these different currencies. It's called Ethereum, the Ether. What is the Ether? It's the energy that flows within a Taurus. Yeah. And what does Ethereum do? It does that. Exactly. So I just wanted to show you that little bit. I'm going to be doing a complete investigative video. I've already started collecting all the the stuff like this to show you that coming real soon. One thing you need to know about Bitcoin real quick. Some of you ain't going to like this, but it is absolutely a toroidal economic system and it is absolutely controlled by the elites, the same people that are running the current uh, water flow system, fractal, fractal system based on the river systems and the, and the oceans, are the same people that control this. Here's your cube. Your cube, you have to look at it a certain way to be able to see it as a three dimensional thing. Here, here's your pyramid on standing and sitting on top of another pyramid. Okay, and here is your Bill Gates 060606 cryptocurrency system using body activity data, controlling people via paying them via smart contracts. And they call it smart contracts, and they call it um, blockchain. Blockchain is a term of slavery. Block and chain, ball and chain. Um, crypto is word for death. Bit is the bit or the bite of the serpent. There. That's as much as I'll say on that in this video because we're going to get into it. Indeed. Here is a nice image of a super sale. Why do you call it a super sale? Well, because just like the cells in your body that have the nucleus in them, which is the powerhouse, it's the eye of the storm, the nucleus, like the eye of your eye, the, the, the uh, pupil. It's where all the action happens. And... The energy flows and spins around it in a giant supercell, just like the cells in your body because the, you're, a Taurus, you're made up of Tauruses, you're in the image of God. And the world, from, every, from a small fractal nature all the way to the top, is in the image of God. Starting to get it? I think so. Here's an image of a radar return from a radar station down in Arizona, and you can see, uh, well, I don't have to tell you what that is. Of course, it's a Taurus spinning. And uh, you see radar is, and so are cellular towers. They are artificial man-made Taurus fields. And the eye of the like the cellular tower is at the top of the tower. 
And depending on how far you out for, from each of these bands that you see running out, just like in a hurricane, the bands of weather in a hurricane, is how severe the storm is, meaning how good your uh, signal is. Yeah. Here's the World Foundation. Look how they spelled it. And look how they show it around the human body, as well as talking about the World Foundation. And here is the World World. Sits on four corners. Doors blow, doors on top. That is the world. Everything in the world copies it, except for a ball. Doesn't work. Here's Visualize World Peace. That is an ice cream flavor for, uh, slips my mind at the moment, Ben and Jerry's. Here is the cover of the album titled, The World. And here's your world, a tourist field. Yep. Setting with a cube, four corners, just like a footstool. Yep. Here is World Records. World Records. And see. The swirl on the neck of the serpent. Mm -hmm. World records. More symbolism that I ran across. Here's the Taurus again. With the 12 Tauros or Tauruses around it. How important is the number 12 to God? Well, you wonder why until you figure out that everything is based on it, including you and the entire world. Funny how they spelled it. Think they know something? How about this one? Prospering in the new world order. Why is it the new world order? Hmm? You're starting to see yet? Because it's going to be controlled by whoever controls the money, controls everything. And they're going to use a toroidal economic system, a.k.a. Bitcoin, to control the world via the New World, W-H-I-R-L-E-D, order. See how easy they fool us? It's incredible, isn't it? Remember I said when what CERN's doing, right? Well, they're building a star in a bottle or a world in a bottle and or a sun in a bottle, a Taurus in a bottle. Yeah, they call it a tokamak, a.k.a. a star in a bottle. And this is one that has already been built and you can see that it is this is the center of the core. This is the core. And this is where the plasma flows around in the controlled toroidal artificial man-made observe nature and copy it. Kind of like that. And you can see some other imagery that to some of you will be very familiar. This is looking at a torus from the side. There's an eye over here where the energy flows and over here, just like what you're seeing right here. This is another image from CERN. Oh, look. We got another eye. Another world. With purple in the middle. What do you reckon they're building? What do you reckon they're really doing? Because you cannot listen to what they say. You have to watch what they do. And what symbolism they show. Because they have to show and tell the truth. But only 
a select will be able to see it, to see the truth. So tell me if this looks like that. Or very similar. Stargate. Gateway. A toroidal field. They even show it in the video with the water coming out like a whirlwind on both sides, splashing backwards and forth. And the pyramid again, of course. And we're going to get more into the pyramid later on as well. All right, let's see. Now that's another image from CERN, nice purple. Here is uh, another, this is their beehive there, which is the same again as a tourist field, tourist building. And here is how the energy flows in a tourist, twists and turns. And they've got it all mapped out mathematically and know exactly how it works, you know. They've got it down pretty much. And so now when you see a building that looks like this in a temple or a basilica, which is in the image of man or woman normally, and also in the image of God and the Taurus, you can see when you look at this now, you know what you're looking at, don't you? Here is the eye, which in the, in the temples represents heaven. Heaven's through here. In our world, it's to the north and it has green lights flowing out of it. That's right. That's why we can't go to the North Pole. Yep. It's a different reason why we can't go to the South Pole. They don't want us realizing what's on the other side of the ice. You will remember in one of the scenes from the Terminator that it showed the ground freezing on the edges from where the bubble the torus came down and it froze around the edge. Did you notice that on, in from the part one? It froze around the edge, just like in our world. But what's on the other side of the edge? of the frozen edge, more world. Yeah, it's like the bands in a, in, a, in a hurricane. You have the inner bands and you have the outer bands, you see. We're somewhere in the middle. You might call it Middle Earth, yeah. But we're not in the center of the storm exactly, are we? See, all this is about the Taurus. And you can also see the scallop seashell now. And you can understand now why the scallop seashell is so important because it is in the image of the world. You can also understand also now why they showed it in the video I Pet Goat. And why all of the pilgrims that followed after Christ and still go and walk the pilgrimage in the Middle East, they follow the scallop shells, the image of God, the image of the world. Isn't this glorious? Thank you, Father in Heaven, for allowing me and giving me the strength and the supporters to be able to do this. You see, here you have the Taurus above, supported by the Tauros down here. These are all images of Tauros or Tauruses, each one of these pillars as well. And the, and the room is surrounded by those supporting the upper Taurus, isn't it? Just like in the image I showed you from the temple. And scripture that describes it exactly like that. Take a little closer look. You see imagery of of flowers inside of cubes inside of cubes. It's all Taurus image of God imagery is what it is. And the same thing goes with this here. It's all the same thing.
Genesis 3.22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. What does it mean to take also of the tree of life? We're doing that. I believe that's part of what we're doing right now. You see, they know all these secrets, even to this day and even to this man. And even to these men and these women, except they chose to use the Taurus, as you can see the spinning up here, the Tauruses. Uh, and here again, basically the, the fascists. They choose to use politicians, all of them billionaires for sure included, use it for evil purposes. And they show you that right here. Here is an image, one type of an image of a Taurus. And you can see they put a blade on it, turned it into a weapon. That reminds me of a place up in New York. All around New York City is the same kind of stuff. Hopefully my recording did, didn't just get messed up and I'm repeating this. Hopefully not. Here's the eye. Actually, maybe more like a serpent eye, but this is a cutaway of a Taurus. You just can't, they're not showing you the whole thing. These are the frequency band lines and it's just, Maybe the way the serpent's eye functions as well. Here's that building again with the four toros, four toros, four toros, four toros. Your torus circle and the square, just like in the first image that I showed you. How the world sits and how the world is created. Right there it is again. And of course, if you look all around New York City... You will see cube on top of the building, cube inside of a cube, pyramid, torus field, torus field, torus field. Two cubes down here, and of course the eye over here, and now the, the Freedom Tower, two into one. And this is showing you the cube inside of a cube in what you might call 4D, but it is a stationary 4D, so it's really 3D. But when they envisioned this, they're envisioning cube inside of cube rotating on itself like Saturn has on top of it, or at least they claim. And just like a Taurus has on top of it. What do they worship? Apparently they worship the Taurus instead of worshiping the Creator. You see, the more you can see, the more you can see. The more you can also understand. Yahushua said, I am the light over all things. I am all. For me, all has come forth, and to me, all has reached. Split a piece of wood, I am there. Lift up the stone, and you will find me there. And this is what I'm teaching you, is to be able to see the image of God. To see everything here it is again of course in a twirl form he said split a piece of wood what will you find okay the fibers are hexagonal inside of the wood and they all run down in little what looks like little cubes and then you have the circles the rings for each year the tree grows that's the circles right coming out from it the toroidal field coming out from it creating every cycle of the year and you have the roots in the ground which is the lower portion the lower toroidal field and the head of the tree up above and the stem down the middle as the eye 
two toroidal fields stacked on top of each other with the cubes in the middle. The image God is in many, many, many everything. <laughs> and the better your eyes get, the easier you will be able to see it. Because when you can't see real well, but it was a fish that has wings like a butterfly. that They fold back. And when he wants to glide, he puts them out. Yep. Take a look at this one. Broccoli. I've mentioned it, but I've created a channel called Cooking with Logic where I'm planning on starting doing cooking videos where I'm going to explain the food as the way, well, as the way I would. Showing the imagery of God in the image, images. Of course, broccoli, as you can see, is just like a toroidal field. Got the crown on the top, the stem in the middle, right? And what does broccoli look like? Well, broccoli, when you look at it closely, it looks like the lungs. See, God labeled everything right on it, what everything is good for. And the broccoli looks like lungs. And what do you know? Broccoli helps clear damaged lungs. And this goes for all food. And God said that all things were good to eat. I know in the Old Testament it says certain things were not. But in the New Testament it says all things are good. Can you see the image of God now in everything? If you can, thank God, don't thank me. I'm just a messenger. Can you see the image of God in things now? Can you see the toroidal field in the bottom of the flower, the torus right here? And what is the point of creation? It's in the eye of the storm. It's in the toroidal field, but in the eye of the storm where the seed is held. Just like when we looked at the apple starting out in this video. Where is the creation? Let me go back and make sure I showed that. The apple. The Taurus field. This is why the apple was chosen for the story in the Garden of Eden. What image is the apple created in? Taurus image of God what does life and the image of the world that's why the apple is so special where does life exist in the apple into the future in the eye the eye of the storm where is creation in the apple in the eye I am I am the gateway, the storm, it's in the center here. And that's why it looks like a woman's reproductive organs with the seed that she carries in her. Even shows her butt. It's just perfect. Here it is again, even built into the leaf. The image of God. Looks just like the vesicle Pisces. Turn it on the side and it looks like the eye, which is also the vesicle Pisces. The eye. Speaking of the Garden of Eden, what did Adam and Eve cover up after eating the apple, or picking the apple and eating it in the story? What did they cover up? Well, they covered up the gateway or one of the gateways of creation, the center point of the toroidal, where creation happens in the eye of the storm. And where would God exist? In the eye of the storm, where the creator is at. <laughs> oh, thank you, God.
I truly am thankful for the knowledge that God has given me, and I'm truly thankful for the time that you have given me to be able to be able to do this in my life. And then, just as I promised to you, to bring that knowledge to you. See, this is a painting by the image or the Garden of Eden. In the center of the storm, the top storm, and the roots underground, which is the lower Taurus. Taurus, Taurus. Center of the storm with the rings. The apples hanging from the limbs. So now when you see an image like this, you know why this image is like this. You have the Garden of Eden in the middle. You see, it's how this image is set up here, the original place. And then you have the circles with squares and circles and all that, and you understand this a lot better now, don't you? I'm sure you do. And maybe I think today I'll leave you with this. Question, why do we refer to ourselves as I or I am Daniel? Like, nice to meet you. I'm Daniel. I, with just the letter I, or is it really a bit deeper than that? Is it because of what our eyes are in the image of God, the eternal flame, the spark of life, the Iris, a.k.a. Taurus. Man is said to have been made in the image of God. What else was made in the image of God? Is it possible God would have made our world in the image of the I, the I am? To say I am is to say I am Iris, or at least the image of. I got... A lot more, probably three, four more uh, parts to this. Going to get deeper and deeper, guys. I love you. Thank you for all the support with my channel. And uh, if you're new to my channel, I have all my links down below to all my other platforms where I have videos that I can't have on YouTube. They're down below, along with all my support links and various other links. I love you guys. We'll be back in touch real soon. I'll let you look at that and maybe we'll talk about it next time. Got the two eyes, the pyramid with the eye on top. It separates into two. One sets in the word star and the other sets in the word gate. And it represents an eye at the same time as the A and the gate and the symbol for a gate. All right, let's go. I love you. God loves you. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye for now.